Earlier this month, Regal Cinemas announced the closure of its 536 movie theaters across the United States. The country's second largest theater chain had reopened in August, but low attendance and the postponement of box office draws like the latest James Bond movie forced Regal to shut down again. Now, a small handful of those theaters are scheduled to reopen. All of this while tens of thousands of employees wonder when or if they will go back to work. Joe Fryer looks at the future of the movies in our Sunday Spotlight. This is madness. Iceberg, run ahead! Iron Man. If the movie is the star, then the supporting cast would have to be the marquee that grabs our attention. Let's all go to the lobby. The giant tubs of popcorn that blanket our laps. The cavernous dark rooms that cloak secret kisses on first dates beneath a flickering tunnel of light that connects projector to screen. Put simply, it's the theater that so often makes the movie an experience. I would go at least once a week, sometimes more than once a week. But for film student Ezra Cubero, those regular trips to the cinema came to a screeching halt when the pandemic hit. So when that was taken away from you pretty suddenly, how have you handled it? It was very difficult. Going to a movie theater was not just an escape. It was also a way for me to find emotional catharsis and things that I was struggling with in my life. The theaters are struggling too. In a letter to Congress, industry groups warned 70% of small and mid-sized theater companies could close permanently with more than 100,000 jobs lost. If lawmakers don't come to their rescue with financial relief. 70 filmmakers signed that letter, including Paul Feig. Don't think about this as a Hollywood issue. <laughs> think about these small businesses, these medium-sized businesses, all the people that they employ. People depend on their livelihoods from these movie theaters. And I'm ready to party! Feig directed hit comedies like Bridesmaids and the latest Ghostbusters. Okay, power up! Movies engineered for packed theaters, brimming with laughter. How worried are you about the future of movie theaters? Well, I'm, I'm very worried about the short term. I'm not worried about the long term. People are always going to want that group experience. So I don't worry about that. But the short term, the theaters have to survive. This month, AMC, the world's largest theater chain, warned it could file for bankruptcy while the Regal movie chain closed all of its multiplexes. We don't have a product. We get a very, very small number of movies, for sure not the big blockbusters. Well, I've seen too much. One blockbuster, Tenet, did finally open, but domestically has only grossed about $50 million. Many others, like Wonder Woman 1984 and the latest Bond flick, No Time to Die, keep delaying their premieres. The CEO of Cineworld, which owns Regal, says big studios likely won't release their big budget films until major markets like New York City and Los Angeles reopen. If there is no New York, there are no movies, we need to close. This is as simple as that. As for Ezra? It's my biggest fear right now is that theaters might not be able to stick around because like this place has been basically my second home and I want to still have that home to go back to. For now, he's relieved some theaters have reopened, offering that much needed escape to the place that makes movies magic. For Sunday Today, Joe Fry, New York.